I'm Rishi. And I'm Trishneet. Have you ever heard the nursery rhyme, London Bridge is Falling Down? Well, it won't be falling anytime soon, thanks to some very brave and fast-acting British citizens. Last week, there was an attempted terrorist attack on London Bridge, an important structure in the heart of England's capital city. A man who had recently been released from prison on charges of terrorism stepped onto the bridge wearing ex an explosive vest. He was also carrying two knives and killed a young man and a young woman who worked in London. It was their screams that drew people's attention. Many ran in fear, but some ran to get weapons. Grabbing whatever they could, three men charged the terrorist, two with fire extinguishers and one with a narwhal tusk. You heard that right, the tusk of a narwhal. The sea creature's horn was mounted on the wall of a local bar. Fast-thinking heroes rushed to the terrorist and distracted him long enough for the police to arrive. The man with the narwhal tusk was stabbed several times but will make a full recovery. The terrorist was killed by the police. Many British citizens are asking why this convicted terrorist was released from jail and allowed to act again. Thankfully, his actions were stopped by some incredibly brave citizens. And now some more interesting stories for you. 12-year-old Jonathan Jones was filmed trying on colorblind corrective glasses for the first time in his life during his high school science class, and his reaction is now helping to distribute those glasses to other colorblind students just like him. Jonathan's principal, Scott Hansen, at Lakeview High School in Cottonwood, Minnesota, shares the same problem of being unable to see color. The specially designed and chroma glasses belong to Hansen. Upon learning that one of his students shared the same condition, Hansen brought the glasses into his class so Jonathan could try them on, and the youngster's reaction was priceless. Luckily, Jonathan's brother uploaded a video of the boy's reaction to Twitter, where it has since been viewed thousands of times. Jonathan's parents immediately launched a GoFundMe page so they could try and raise enough money to buy Jonathan his own pair of glasses, which typically cost upwards of $270. Their GoFundMe campaign has now raised more than $29,000, and Jonathan's family is working with Enchroma to use the money to give free, cl free glasses to other colorblind students who may not be able to afford their own pair. The company is also donating a pair of glasses for every set that is purchased through the fundraiser. Have you ever broken a bone? If so, you know just how annoying a cast can be. It's no more because the company has designed a futuristic sleeve that can make scratchy, foul-smelling, uncomfortable plaster casts a thing of the past. Their startup, their startup company, Cast21, has created a waterproof, lightweight, and breathable alternative that can be worn while bathing, exercising, and even swimming in the ocean. The patented design is constructed from a wide mesh sleeve filled with two liquid resins which are molded into the correct position for each patient and it is even available in a range of vibrant colors. Patients sporting traditional plaster or fiberglass casts are unable to clean underneath the molded brace, making the skin open to infection. When it is time to remove the hardened bandages, wearers are also forced to watch a doctor remove their casts using a circular saw. That's scary. The new cast is designed so that a physician can snip through the tabs and pull it open easily. It is also faster to apply than the traditional cast. When Cast20, while Cast21 hopes to make a splash in the field of orthopedic technology, the innovation is still a work in progress. So far, the company only has a forearm model designed in a medium size, but they hope to expand their sizing and create casts for their lower legs in the near future. Waterproof 3D printed casts are already in the market around the U.S. and Europe, but they can cost hundreds of dollars, and patients can be left waiting days or weeks for the cast to be printed and delivered to them. There is currently no price point associated with Cast21's product, but the aim is to make it as accessible as possible. A floating farm in the Netherlands is taking sustainability to a whole other water level. The food industry is responsible for producing massive amounts of greenhouse gas emissions simply through transporting goods and produce into a city. In fact, one in four freight trucks on the highway is responsible for transporting food into urban areas. Not only does this create excessive air pollution, it also means that cities could fall victim to food shortages during natural disasters and harsh weather conditions. A Dutch couple were inspired to build a three-story floating farm right in their Dutch city of Rotterdam after they found themselves in New York City following Hurricane Sandy back in 2012. With so many city dwellers clamoring for food and supplies, grocery stores quickly ran out of stock, and the weather conditions meant that no trucks would be able to bring additional supplies into the city until the roads had cleared up. Their farms now produces fruit, vegetables, and dairy products right inside of the city limits. A nearby floating platform supports a number of 
solar panels to supply the farm's electricity. And since the food is also produced on the water, it doesn't contribute to deforestation or valuable land property. With about 40% of the world's population reportedly living within 60 miles of shoreline, the inventors hope that their flowing farm will inspire other coastal cities to adopt the eco-friendly new form of agriculture. Big news came last week in the world of electric vehicles. Tesla unveiled the Cybertruck, while Ford introduced the next generation of Mustang. The Ford Mustang is one of America's most well-known sports cars, but instead of releasing a new version of this classic muscle car, famous for power and gas guzzling, they have a new addition, the Mach-E, a Mustang SUV that is fully electric. The Mach-E has a large motor between the rear axles and another smaller one in front, making it four-wheel drive. It can charge for 47 miles in just 10 minutes. The starting price for the Mach-E is $43,000 for the base model. The GT and first edition will have upward costs of $60,000. This is a pretty low price compared to other electric SUVs. A few days after the Mustang Lodge, in a building right across the street, Tesla unveiled their latest vehicle, the Cybertruck. It's an electric pickup truck that looks more like an armored vehicle from a combat video game. It's like a metal trapezoid on wheels. It's made of stainless steel that SpaceX de designed for its rockets. Oh, and it's bulletproof. But it's not indestructible. When Tesla founder Elon Musk threw a metal ball at the window during the launch event, the glass shattered and sent the internet into giggles. Pre-orders for the Cybertruck have been strong, but we won't see them in production until 2022. The Mustang Mach-E, however, will be available by late next year. It'll be interesting to see what'll be next in electric cars. Do you like to read comic books? How much would you pay for your favorite one? How about a million dollars? Sounds crazy? Well, a perfectly pre preserved copy of Marvel's first ever comic book was just sold for $1.26 million. Dallas-based Heritage Auctions sold the comic on November 21st, 2019 to a buyer who wanted to remain anonymous. The comic was published in 1939 by Timely Comics, which later became Marvel Comics. It features an android superhero called the Human Torch, a costume detective known as Angel, and a, and a mutant anti-hero, Namor the Submariner. The graphic novel was first purchased in 1939 for a mere 10 cents by Uniontown, Pennsylvania mail carrier, well known for buying first issues of comics and magazines. Though it has changed hands a few times since, the, issues in, the issue is in outrageously good condition, scoring 9.4 on a scale of 1 to 10. According to the auctioneers, only two other known comic book copies compare with scores over 9.0. Without question, this is the granddaddy of all Marvel comics, without which we would not have the characters and stories we enjoy in today's comics and feature, feature films. Though the latest sale surpasses $1.1 million paid in 2000 level for a Marvel comic featuring the first Spider-Man, it is not the most paid for a graphic novel. That honor belongs to the first issue of Action Comics, published in 1938 by DC Comics. The graphic novel, which debuted Superman, sold for a mind-boggling $3.2 million in 2014. Sometimes, crazy problems call for crazy solutions. Australia's Great Barrier Reef is dying and scientists are doing everything they can to help it recover. Pollution and rising sea temperatures due to global warming are causing this ecosy important ecosystem to suffer. One big factor to ensure the health of the coral is having the creatures that call it home. It's called a symbiotic relationship. The coral provides for the fish, but the fish also provide for the coral. Now scientists are trying to trying something new to bring back life that has left. Underwater speakers. Scientists have found that dying coral might be revived by playing the sounds of healthy reefs via underwater loudspeakers to attract young fish. As an international research team found that twice as many fish arrived and stayed at the reefs compared to patches where no sound was played. The new technique works by regenerating the sounds that are lost when reefs are quietened by degradation. Healthy coral reefs are remarkably no noisy places. The crackle of snapping shrimp and the and the whoops and grunts of fish combined to form a dazzling biological soundscape. Juvenile fish home in on these sounds when they're looking for a place to settle. 
Reefs become ghostly quiet when they are degraded, as shrimps and fish disappear. But by using loudspeakers to restore this lost soundscape, scientists can attract young fish back again. Then the popular tourist destination was struck by an exceptionally high tide, which caused flooding in historic landmarks like St. Mark's Basilica. 85% of the city flooded with water reaching about 6 feet in some areas. At least one person died, and the damage could have been extensive. Venice's mayor estimated it will cost uh, hundreds of millions of euros to repair the city. He asked the government for help. It's not unusual for Venice to experience flooding around this time of the year. But the mayor blamed the climate change for its historic flooding. He has a point. Eight of the highest tides recorded in Venice have came in the last 20 years. Venice has a stone wall to protect it from its tide, but it's too low to stop the extreme tides that have been experiencing. The city has been working on a solution using steel barriers underwater that can be raised for extreme cases, but the project has been unsuccessful. This week, I have the responsibility of sharing some sad news with you. Those of you who are fans of the Oakland Zoo will be familiar with their four African elephants. On Tuesday afternoon, the eldest member of their herd, Madonda, passed away. Madonda was born in 1969, making her 50 years old. She came to Oakland Zoo in 1991. An elephant's lifespan is 17 years, but Madonda entertained visitors in Oakland for 26. She had, a, she had long, beautiful tusks and had a gentle demeanor, said zookeepers. Madonda fell over in the elephant enclosure at 2.45 p.m. Tuesday and was dead when zookeepers arrived. She'll, she'll be taken to the UC Davis Medical Center to see if they can find out the cause. Thank you for the years of joy, Madonda. You'll be greatly missed. Hey everyone, I'm Maria with this week's sports report. In the NFL, the Oakland Raiders lost 49 against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. The Raiders are 6-6, six and six, which means they're likely not they're not likely to make the playoffs. They will play the Tennessee Titans on Sunday. The San Francisco 49ers lost a heartbreaker on Sunday, losing 2017 on the last second field goal to the Baltimore Ravens. The Niners are 10 and two and have another tough game against the New Orleans Saints this weekend. In hockey news, the Sharks lost against the Washington Capitals on Tuesday, 5-2. They play the Carolina Hurricanes after the filming of this report. In the NBA, the Warriors played the Charlotte Hornets Wednesday and lost 106-91. They will play the Chicago Bulls today at 5 p.m. Unfortunately, Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson are still injured, and the Dubs are 4-19, one of the worst records in the league. That's all for sports. Hi, I'm Trishneet with this week's Brain Teasers. The last primary brain teaser was, What is greater than God, more evil than the devil, the poor have it, the rich need it, and if you eat it, you will die? The answer is, nothing. And sadly, there are no winners. The last intermediate brain teaser was, Anna was born on December 24th, yet her birthday always falls in the summer. How is this possible? The answer is that she lives in the Southern Hemisphere, and the winners are room 502 and room 407. This week's primary brain teaser is, Imagine you're in a dark room. How do you get out? I repeat, imagine you're in a dark room. How do you get out? This week's intermediate brain teaser is, you always want it, sometimes you can have it and be it, but it never lasts forever. What is it? I repeat, you always want it, sometimes you can have it and be it, but it never lasts forever. That's, your, that's for brain teasers. Great stuff. Thanks, reporters. Remember, there are going to be photos with Santa this Friday, uh, 5.30 to 8 p.m. There is also going to be a sock drive that is being led by Miss Gifford. Don't forget to bring your money for pennies for patients. That's all we've got. See you on the next Friday show.